So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our today's workshop. Uh, so to begin with, uh, at first, I'd like to say today is the first day of Bengali New Year, uh, 1428, and I would like to wish you a happy new year from my end. Uh, I am Khandukar Mushfikul Islam, and I'm a graduate research assistant at the HPHC team here in at NMSU. Uh, I have my colleagues Muhammad with me as well. Uh, today, our workshop is about the Jupyter Notebook on Discovery. I'll try to cover some important topics about how we can use uh, Jupyter Notebook on our supercomputer discovery. Uh, so the objective of today's workshop uh, so objective of the today's workshop are there will be an introduction to Jupyter Notebook and then uh, we'll see how we can use uh, Jupyter Notebook on discovery, uh, what features uh, does Jupyter Notebook provides us and how we can use it and then uh, how we can avail the usefulness of on-demand and I'll try to demonstrate some of the examples. So uh, let's see first, uh, what is Jupyter Notebook? Uh, Jupyter Notebook is basically a way for us to run code interactively within a web browser alongside some visualization and markdown text to explain the process what's going on. Uh, this open source web application will allow you to create and share software, scores, equation, visualization, and narrative, uh, narrative text, and so on. So the purpose uh, of the Jupyter Notebook on discovery. So why, uh, why Jupyter Notebook is useful and how powerful is it? So uh, lots of scientific institutions are using the notebook in order to clearly explain exactly how they got the result. We can reproduce the result from within the notebook themselves. The execution of program via Jupyter Notebook interface is an easy one. Then uh, we can uh, we can get easy exportation of the program's output and the easy iteration of the code. Uh, moreover, it supports over 40 programming languages, for example, Python, R, Julia, Scala, etc. For the easy distribution by email, Dropbox, Jupyter Notebook is a very good option. So that's why like uh, you can think of using the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, for the more information, uh, you can visit. Uh, their uh, website that is uh, jupyter.org. So let us see how we can run Jupyter Notebook on discovery. So uh, to do that, at first, uh, we have to log in to our on-demand portal. So like you can easily join uh, in, at our uh, on-demand portal from NMSU network. Uh, but if you are outside from the like NMSU campus, you can log in through VPN. Uh, so if you, uh, uh, if you joined our last workshop, I think you already know how we can uh, how we can join in our NMSU network through VPN. Uh, but uh, but. You can find it. Uh, you, you can find the recordings of the video of that workshop uh, at uh, hpc.nmsu.edu. So, like, I want to show you where you can find it. So, if you go to hpc.nmsu.edu, then if you go to the workshop, you can find the wo workshop, the previous workshop over here. So you can also, uh, you can find uh, the previous fall 2020 workshop from the website, uh, but for the last website, if you want to look into, uh, it was about the introduction, uh, introduction to open on demand. So it hasn't been updated yet, but uh, our team, HPC team will update the workshop very soon. So, okay. So if we go back to the slide, so uh, as I was saying, uh, you can uh, you can join uh, to this uh, NMSU network uh, uh, with the use of VPN. Then to join the uh, to join the on demand to launching on demand, you have to uh, you have to go to uh, go through this link. So let me show you. Let 
it's taking some time. Oh, uh, one thing you, you have to make sure that you are connected to the VPN network. So right now I'm not at the, in the campus network. I think I forgot to connect my VPN. So let me connect my VPN. I'm connecting to the vpn.nmsu.edu. Then I'm giving my NMSU password. So now it's connected. Uh, I think I have some issue with the connection. It's connecting again. I think I have this connected now. So then you can, uh, you can go here, then like I'm using my username and the password. Okay, so after a successful login, you can see this page. Uh, in this page, uh, we can see a news update if we have any. The HPC team always update this page if required. You can also find the workshop recorded link uh, here also, uh, you can uh, explore the tabs, uh, like there is a file tabs, then jobs and clusters, like some interactive apps. But uh, today uh, I'll not be covering all. Uh, so I'll just cover only the Jupyter Notebook Lab part within the interactive apps. But uh, you can uh, you can visit our previous uh, workshop. And, uh, uh, previous workshop recording, and you'll be able to see how to deal with these tabs. So, so then uh, I already covered this. So then let's see, uh, so uh, what are there like in, in this form? So, if I go back to the dashboard, uh, so let us see like how uh, how we can launch a Jupyter notebook. So from the interactive interactive apps, like if you see the Jupyter Lab or notebook, you can click here, and then you can see the, uh, there will be a form. So there will be form, and to launch your launch your program at first, you have to fill up this uh, this form. So there are uh, there are seven partition on discovery. Uh, you can see like there is interactive, normal, GPU, EPSCore, iLab, uh, CFD lab, and class lab. So there are seven partition. You can choose the partition uh, which you need to, or uh, in which partition uh, you think you will uh, you'll be working. So right now I'm, I'm choosing the normal partition. So there are some options for the GPUs, uh, but uh, the normal partition uh, doesn't have the GPU and the maximum GPU per node is allowed uh, is two. Then, uh, so as I am using the normal partition here, I'll not be using any GPUs. Uh, after that, like numbers of hours. So you can select how many hours you want to run your job, uh, but the maximum numbers of the hour is 24. So like, let's see, uh, so right now I'm putting the numbers of hours as two. Uh, so I just want to run my job for two hours. Uh, that's why I was speci specifying as two. Then, uh, then it comes to CPUs and trades. Uh, so per CPU, the maximum, uh, the maximum memory is about uh, eight GB, and uh, you can use actually sixteen uh, CPUs. Uh, maximum trade uh, here, which is known as CPUs, is possibly 16. So you can use the most 16, but I'm using two uh, here. 
so uh, I already said the memory per CPU is the maximum is eight GB. So, so I'm just using one GB of that. So for the email, uh, uh, for the email, if you want the notification about your job, you can provide your registered email with discovery here. So right now I'm just leaving it blank. Uh, so after that, we comes to working directory. So this working directory is a new addition to the Jupyter Notebook interactive app in on demand. Uh, you can select your project directory by select uh, by clicking this uh, select project directory. Uh, but your default uh, project directory is your home, uh, but you can select the folder uh, uh, within uh, where you want to keep your uh, project. So if I if I go inside, I can see I can see the folder. So uh, you can select in which folder uh, you want to keep your project. Uh, then, uh, but the thing is, uh, here you can only, only uh, you can only select the folders. You can only select the folders, but you'll not. Uh, but uh, one good thing is that uh, within the folder you can see uh, how many files or what are the files are over there. But uh, you cannot select the uh, files. Uh, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you you cannot select the files. So let me select this folder. So I set I set my working directory like as home, then my username and the Jupyter notebook. So uh, then uh, we come to the user interface. So we have two interface right now. So uh, we have Jupyter Lab and Jupyter notebook. So today in this workshop, I'll be covering mostly for the Jupyter notebook. But at the end of the session, uh, I will show uh, what we have uh, in the Jupyter Lab. So this is another new addition to this interactive app segment. Uh, so uh, is now you, uh, you can choose your preferred interface between Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebook. So uh, that's that's actually very cool. Uh, so it's it's very recent update for us. Then uh, we can choose the Anaconda version. We have Anaconda version three and two, and uh, we have some uh, setup commands, bash syntax. Uh, I am not going to cover this right now, but uh, at the at the present, like later on the presentation, I'll covering uh, these uh, custom commands, uh, how we can like active our own environment or our own module. So I'll be covering those in in our later side slides. So uh, then. Uh, we can connect to the Jupyter Notebook and uh, we can have a successful session. So let's see uh, how we can do that. So I can, I want to sh uh, show that again, like I, uh, my partition is normal. I'm not using any GPUs, uh, my number of hours two, uh, CPU two, then uh, my memory I'm using, one gigabytes of memory. I'm leaving my email blank, I start the directory. Uh, then I am choosing the interface as notebook. I am using Anaconda 3. I'm not using any custom uh, environment. I'm using the default environment. That's why like I'm leaving this one blank and I am going to launch it. All right, so I think uh, the session was successfully created, but uh, we have to wait for some moment. The jobs, uh, the job is right now in the queue. Please be patient as this process can take a few minutes. Let me try refreshing it. Okay, so yeah, so I got the connected session. So now we can connect to the Jupyter Notebook and uh, you can see that there is, uh, there is a password. So we can use this password. I'll show how we can use this password. So let us connect to the Jupyter Notebook first. And also we can see the our session ID and how many times remaining for me, for us, and the host and the created information. So once uh, we are connected, uh, so we can see the successful session. We can see, uh, so remember we, uh, we choose our uh, working directory at first. So uh, that's why like 
we don't have anything uh, we are on that directory so you cannot go up but uh, you can uh, you can go inside in the subfolder uh, of that directory so uh, you have to select the uh, project space very carefully because once you select uh, select a directory you will not be able to go up uh, for that all right, so now we can see that we have a successful uh, Jupyter session over here. So that's how you can uh, connect to the Jupyter notebook on our supercomputer discovery. All right, so let's go back to the slide again. Uh, so let us know something about the architecture of the Jupyter notebook. So uh this is how it works uh, your browser is the front end of uh, uh your browser is the front end for the notebook then you have your notebook server and uh, like every notebook server will have its kernel so kernel is an entity uh, which is running your code uh, when uh, when in jupyter notebook you are typing different commands uh, it will send a json message to the uh, notebook server and then notebook server will eventually use kernel to run your code and supply the output uh, output back to the uh, back to the browser so this is how actually uh, uh, jupyter notebook is working so so let us see some different modes in the jupyter notebook so there are two different modes uh, in the jupyter notebook one is common mode, uh, which allows uh, us to perform action like uh, like adding and deleting cells, and you can put yourself in the common mode by hitting the space uh, escape key, and you can you can uh, you can see the marking uh, there will turn to blue color. So let let us see what's going on over there. So I'm creating uh, like Python three notebook. So I can change the title. Let's do it as test. Okay, so I was discussing about the common mode. So this is the common mode. Uh, if, if you hit escape, so it will turn blue. So by uh, so now you are in the common mode. Uh, the blue means uh, you are in common mode and uh, there is another one mode uh, that is edit mode like if you hit enter uh, you can go into the edit mode and then like uh, you can you can see it it has been turned as a green box so it means uh, you are already in the edit mode uh, you can just click into the cell uh, to enter the edit mode also so like for example I'm just find edit mode, uh, and if so, uh, depending on the operating system you're using, like Mac or Windows or Linux, uh, that might be different. But you can get all the information how to run uh, command mode, edit mode, and uh, and so on, like uh, from this uh, keyboard shortcut session. So, so let's add some like very simple print hello world uh, code here. So we have these uh, lines, uh, this line of code. So now how can we run this? So to run this, uh, you can go to the cell. So you have different option. So you can uh, you can run the this cell only, uh, then you can run cell and select below. Uh, so you have uh, many options, like you can run all, run all below. So you can choose uh, which, uh, which one you want to do from this uh, cell menu, or you can just hit control and enter for the windows. Uh, so if you if you hit control and enter, and then you can see it prints uh, like hello world. So the cell number beside uh, the cell number beside uh, here you can see is the execution order. So not uh, not just how things are assigned from top to bottom so this indicates uh, the this indicates the execution order of your uh, notebook for example uh, let me create another one so 
this one will help you to insert a cell below. So let me type name. John. So I'm running this one. Then. If I add another one. So now if I run this, I can see this, uh, I can I can see the name as John, but then if I mark, then I run it. So I can, I, I see there's no change, but if I come here and then run the name again, so I can see uh, it, this is marked. So, uh, we can uh, we can ensure that like this is not from top to bottom. Uh, you can you can maintain uh, in which order you want to run your cell and uh, see what's the output. So like this is very interesting and uh, you can see the execution order. So this one was first, uh, second, then like third one is missing. Like that's not here right now. Then four and fifth. And if you want if you want to run all, then like we can see the output like this. So uh, this is a very brief intro for the Jupyter Notebook, uh, how it behaves. Uh, there are lots of options, uh, like for the insert menu, cell menu, and the kernel menu also, like uh, I think uh, if you want, you can explore also to know better. So now uh, we'll be looking into something different. Uh, so which is actually, uh, uh, it, uh, which known as markdown feature. Uh, to markdown a cell, uh, we need to go to the cell menu and then, uh, then select the markdown from the cell type menu. So we have to select this one. So I am removing this one. So for this cell, I am making this cell uh, as markdown cell. So I'm going to cell type and I'm, uh, I have selected the markdown. So this cell uh, will be for the markdown. Uh, do, this will be markdown cell. So let's, let's write a simple markdown. Sorry for that. This is a normal paragraph. So let us run this one and see how's the output. I think something is happening. Just a moment. So 
So I have this code snippet uh, my local. Uh, so I'm just trying to copy and paste to see uh, to see the output for this one. Uh, so what we can do? So let's delete this cell. another one so i'm making this cell type as markdown okay so some uh, something happened over there so i'm just uh, for the illustration purpose i'm showing this one here so this is how we write a markdown so this will be the heading uh, this note will be placed, uh, then uh, we have another headline. And then to run this, like if we, uh, if you, if we run this cell, so run cell, so we can see, so this is how the markdown works and uh, this will be our output. We can, uh, we can uh, write any information about our project, about like about our documentation. Uh, so you can see like we can maintain the headline, uh, we can make the words italics bold. So this is, uh, this is a very helpful, uh, this is a very helpful option uh, for that. So then, uh, on the Jupyter notebook. It's Mushfik, we lost your voice. So um you lost my voice. Can you hear yeah. me properly now? No. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, no, it's fine. But we have like we have okay. lots, uh, here what you have said, you have just said. So if you can repeat, please. So uh, should I repeat uh, this one uh, starting from here or like yeah. the example was okay? No, no, the example was fine, but the like the okay. last minute. Okay, okay. So uh, like, uh, like this markdown, uh, we have also some useful features. Uh, you can run and see on the Jupyter notebook, which can be uh, interpreted as a bash command. For example, this exclamatory sign peep list will show us the output, uh, like same as the output if we run this uh, in the command line. So let us see how it works. So if we write peep list and then run it so we can see the packages and the version uh in in this module so it, it is same as uh it is same as the common line uh common line command so this is actually very powerful and uh, fun thing to do uh so uh, it's kind of cool and uh, you can run these bash commands from directly within the notebook uh now this notebook uh, will also uh, comes with a built in uh, commands uh, they known as cell magic so like uh, we have so, uh, we have some different uh, built in features uh, for the notebook uh, this magic so there are two uh, two magic thing uh, one is line magic and another is uh, cell cell magic So, uh, so uh, I already told that uh, the, these notebooks also come with a bunch of uh, built-in commands uh, that they are called magic. Uh, if you if you look into the single person, so if if I focus here, so this single uh, single person means uh, that this is a line command. So this means the command argument will come from the same line and those are uh, called line line magic. And uh, like we have the opportunity, we can use uh, double uh, double percent sign. Uh, that means the entire cell will be, the entire cell 
that means the entire cell will be as the common argument and those are called the cell magic uh, so we can uh, use this magic command to list all the other variable commands and commands uh, to list all call like is ls magic so i i want to go again to the jupyter notebook and let's see like what actually these are doing so if i use uh, this is a line magic so if i use a uh, single percent then the pwt and then i run it so i can see the current directory uh, current directory of my project space so uh, this is uh, this is very uh, interesting thing then uh, we can also do ls and then run it to see like uh, what are the uh, what do we have inside our folder so th this is the same as the linux command so uh, we can do that and also like we can do ls la to see the details so similarly uh, you have uh, you have many thing uh, uh, with the uh, with the magic and also also you can you can check the magic list by doing You can I can check the magic thing by ls magic. So now we, uh, now here you can see the available line magics and the available cell magics as well. So there are lots of options for the line magic and they serve different purpose purposes and also for the uh, like cell magic. So you can go and take over uh, what they are actually doing and how we can use that. So then, uh, so these magic commands are like bash commands, but they are magic commands uh, whose, uh, but, but there are some magic commands uh, whose who's functionality is beyond bash command. So the IPython kernel of the Jupyter notebook is able to display plot of code uh, in the input cells. So it works seamlessly with the matplotlib library. Uh, so we also have a inline, uh, inline magic function uh, that uh, that renders the plot out cell uh, even uh, even if show function of the plot object is not a colleague so uh, i have a simple code uh, in the presentation so if you go here so like uh, we can run uh, this matplotlib like so this inline magic and let's see uh, how it uh, how it gives us the output so so This sample code uh, is here, just uh, like just some snippet code that I got directly from the matplotlib uh, documentation. So, like if I paste uh, here and run this, uh, I can see that. So if I run this, Just a moment. So let me write this code.
in fifteen. E dot friend. And let's run this code. Sorry. So it's in progress. So you can see the streak over here. Sorry, typing mistake. Uh, I think I'm missing some library over here. Uh, I am sorry for the issue, uh, but uh, when I was trying this one previously, it was working, I think uh, like some issue uh, with the package has been happened. So I'm going to skip this one. Uh, I'm going to skip this one and uh sorry for that um most we have we have a question in chat it says oh. that can we install libraries to use in our code or is there any restriction to install yeah uh, so uh, we can install libraries uh, to use our code uh, there is uh, uh, for some cases uh, you can install and uh, in some cases if you cannot you can go to uh, you can contact the HPC team and uh, they will help you to install your uh, libraries or packages. But I'll show uh, later on the presentation, I'll show how you can uh, how you can install your libraries uh, in, in your custom environment. So like I'll be covering this one. Uh, so hold on us, uh, hold with us. So uh, sorry for this one. Uh, I am uh, moving to the next slide. So uh, what actually it, it it was supposed to show like uh, if it was, uh, you can try this uh, course snippet and uh, it will show the plot uh, for this like random number uh, uh, within the line uh, with the help of the this line magic command. So they also like you can find, if you would like to do some uh, practice, uh, you can and or you want to see how other people is using notebook. Uh, you can find a lot of example uh, in online in the Google search. Yeah, if you just uh, if you just type uh, 
Jupyter galleries, uh, uh, e e the top result is the Python GitHub page, like uh, which is this one. And if you go to this page, uh, there's lots of example uh, that you can download directly and play around with. So like, just let's go to this uh, website and see like what do they have actually. Oops, I don't know like why it is taking a lot of time. Seems like the internet connection is not that good. Okay, uh, so it's here. So you can go to the introductory tutorial. Uh, there is a, like you can go here, a, a collection of notebooks. And then you can see a uh, lots of tutorials and the example how to deal with uh, the Jupyter notebook and the kernel. Uh, so like, if i go to this trapezoid rule like you can you can uh, go inside the markdown cell how they are writing and then like uh, you can you can play uh, play, uh, play around with it by downloading uh, this script uh, this uh, no jupyter notebook script uh, from this option you can download this one so yeah, like there, are, uh, you have the option. There are many example you can play around with. So I'm uh, going to the slide again. All right. So so now uh, we'll be uh, we'll be showing like how how you can use a custom environment. So uh, to active our environment, uh, you can write uh, this conda thing. Uh, you can you can write uh, conda activate then the environment the custom environment you uh, have created so uh, jupyter lab must have to be installed in your custom environment so if you don't uh, have uh, the jupyter lab on your custom uh, installed on your uh, environment like custom environment then you might uh, you might see some uh, like issue like this you, you can you can see the picture over here so then like uh, you can see messages like this for debugging purpose this card will be written for uh, six more days but you will you will see that you don't have you have the session id you have uh, the created date but uh, there is no uh, no option to connect it uh, with the jupiter uh, jupiter lab uh, with a successful session. So make sure uh, when you are creating a environment, you have the Jupyter Lab installed in your custom environment. So I will show you like how you can uh, you can uh, create a custom environment and I, I refer to this link. So you have like you have tutorials how you can create a Anaconda virtual uh, uh, virtual environment. So let's go and see like uh, what we have over there so okay just i'm just taking this link from the slide Okay, so here you can see uh, like how you can create uh, the virtual environment. So you at first you have to create a conda environment, uh, then you can uh, load your module. Uh, so I'll show this uh, everything. Uh, so like I, I referred this, uh, like this link, like you have every details uh, very clearly uh, how to create a custom environment. Uh, so yeah, so let's go back to the slide again. So you can create a uh, like custom environment using this shell access. So what you have to do, uh, like uh, conduct create then dash n uh, my my underscore env this is the name of your custom environment uh like i i'm, I'm just uh iterating through over the command line because i already uh, i already create a 
uh, custom environment like uh, i'll show that to you and like i'll try to install some packages uh, and to uh, to show you how we you can install libraries and packages like in your custom environment so actually i refer to that link if you need to create any custom environment and also i'm mentioning this in the slides uh, to create a custom environment, you have to uh, you have to write first like on the create in my uh, dash in my environment. Then you have uh, then you have to activate it your custom environment. So for that, uh, you you have to write conda active my uh, environment. So like if you if you do that, like you can see you can see like this my env in front of your uh, uh, in front of your uh, machine uh, machine name so uh, it shows actually okay uh, we are now inside the custom environment which is my uh, my dash in so uh, for the conda list if you type conda list then you can see the packages installed uh, in your like environment you can see the name version and the build channel uh, for that packages and then uh, for example uh, i want to install panda in my uh, custom environment so for that so i have to write conda install panda so this will help us to install the pandas uh, library panda package uh, in your uh, my environment, like which is your custom environment. So let's go and start a session. Uh, how we can see uh, how custom environment is working. So I'm going here. So I am I'm deleting the previous one uh, so that we can free the resources. Okay, so now I'm going to open a Jupyter Notebook session again. I'm use, okay, now I'm using the interactive person, uh, partition. Our CPU is okay. I am not selecting any working directory right now. I'm going for the Jupyter Notebook using the Anaconda version. So let's, uh, I already have uh, my custom environment, which is my env. So uh, when I'm going to uh, launch my project, uh, I would like to use my custom environment. So that's why I am using conda activate my env. So then I'm going to launch it. Let's wait for some moment. Okay, it's connected right now. All right, so let's go here, like. I already have a code example. Uh, this this code example is actually from the book uh, Python Machine Learning. Uh, this is the chapter, and you can also find this uh, like code uh, using this link. Uh, so what I would like to show you here. So this is the implementation of a perceptron learning algorithm in Python. This is a machine learning thing. I'll not go details. Uh, in the uh, inside the code uh, i'll just show how we can do things over here so let's see uh, so how we can check our environment so if you write uh, conda env list and then run so you can see uh, you are in the you are in the environment is my env uh, so this is the custom environment and this asterisk shows you like in which environment uh, right now you are in. So, uh, for example, uh, when we, we were launching our program, uh, we, we were launching our job, like if we didn't specify anything uh, here, uh, then uh, we might have, uh, then we might have base environment but uh, if you can remember that i uh, i activated my environment uh, so that's why uh, the streak is here and i am using my custom environment so that's that's cool and if i if i do conda list 
So I can see uh, like what packages uh, right now I have. So uh, look here that I have already installed the Jupyter Lab here. So remember, if you don't have Jupyter Lab in your custom environment, you'll not be able to uh, connect through this. Uh, uh, this window. So make sure uh, whenever you are creating a custom environment, you are having your uh, JupyterLab installed over there. So uh, what I was trying to say, uh, if you look here, you cannot see uh, matplotlib over here. So you cannot see matplotlib uh, package installed, libraries installed over here. So that will uh, that will be an issue for us uh, right now. So. All right, uh, so let us run this cell first. So now the execution order is three over here. Then, okay, it, 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 has been run, it has been run successfully. Then we are going to run this one. Then this is taking time. This ran also perfectly. This one, good. Oops. So like whenever like we come to the matplotlib inline, so like previous slide, uh, what I couldn't show you like for some uh, technical error, uh, I will show that to you right now. Uh, those example are uh, like quite similar. So now you can see uh, this uh, matplotlib inline, this uh, line magic is not working. So why it's happening? If you uh, if you uh, dig into the error like you can see like this conda environment my uh, library environment so they couldn't find any matplotlib in line uh, uh, libraries so uh, we can uh, we can uh, we can be sure that like we'll be needing the matplotlib library over here so how we can do that so how we can do it like this is an advantage of the jupyter notebook uh, what you can do uh, in command line you can also do that you can also do that here as well, uh, like in this browser window. So let me add a cell here. So if you do on the install lib. So let's run this. So this is installing the matplotlib packages inside our uh, custom environment. So it might take a little while. So uh, thanks for your patience. almost done okay so it says it's already done so i'm going to log out the session so uh, logging out the session doesn't kill your job uh, so if you want to log back in here again so now uh, it requires a password so where from where you can get your password so if you go to the so if you go to the active jobs Okay, so here in the interactive session, like this is my job, uh, 593191. Uh, this is the session ID and you have this password here. So you can copy this password, go there and like log in. So now we can see like we logged into the environment again. I'm going to my target project here. Like I am opening this one. 
So last time when we saw that uh, Jupiter a uh, matplotlib was an installed over there. So now again, uh, if we run the conda list, and we can see matplotlib over here. So let's see how it behaves right now. So it was uh, showing an issue. So now it it ran. So there is no, nothing here. So then if I ran it, uh, so with the help of matplotlib inline commands, like we can see our like, scattered output, uh, like plot output over here. So then it, uh, it will run smoothly. So this is how, uh, so yeah, previously it was showing an error. Now it's showing us the result. So this is how you can uh, you can use your like custom environment. You can uh, you can install like packages libraries uh, in your custom environment. But uh, there are some restriction uh, for some packages and libraries. Like if you face uh, any issue, uh, like feel free to uh, contact our HPC team and uh, they will uh, help you to solve the issue. And uh, like if you need to remove any of the like. Uh, any of the libraries from your custom environment, you can write uh, conda remove name, then the custom environment name, and then the name of the library. So if you run it, then it will be removed from your custom uh, environment again. So this was the example we were actually looking into. So then uh, I I already showed you how you can check your uh, like custom environment whether you are in your custom environment or you are in your base environment. Yeah, you can be anywhere. Like you, you can select uh, any environment you want. Uh, to do that, uh, you have to do conda activate then the name of the environment. Uh, how we actually from the uh, when we we were filling up the form uh, form uh, we uh, we did that uh, if you if you can recall so then uh, let's come to the Jupiter uh, Jupiter Lab so this is a uh, this is the newest edition uh, in in our interactive app segment so now like if i open a file uh, we can get the same interface as the Jupiter notebook like it's the same, but uh, everything is now tabbed here rather than a multiple uh, browser tab. Uh, now it's uh, it's in one tab and it's easy to work with. Uh, this Jupyter Lab it it's uh, it looks more like an ID and it allows you to have the terminal beside uh, you can uh, beside and you can quickly switch back and forth uh, to your code and the terminal. So let's see like how it how it works. Yeah, I'm going to close all this session. I am going to delete this one to free the resources. Again, I need to fill this form. But this time, like I'm not setting any working directory, I will be using my home as the default one. So now uh, we'll be using the Jupyter Lab. And similarly, uh, when you are launching the Jupyter Lab, you can uh, you can use your custom environment or uh, you can use the base one. Uh, so, like you have all the instruction how to like uh, activate your custom environment. You can you can get it from here. So, like I'm just uh, launching the Jupyter Lab real quick to see it, uh, briefly what's uh, what's there inside. So now I connect to the Jupyter. So now here you can see the cool interface of the Jupyter Lab. Uh, so you have the folders, like you can you can go back and forth with uh, from here. So the uh, moving directory, like uh, going from here and there is very easy from the Jupyter Lab. Like you can you can change the theme uh, theme as well. So 
if I do this, like then I can run this one also. So this one, uh, this is the last example we saw. Uh, like you have the opportunity to change your theme. Like this is the basic theme. This is the dark theme. I, I really like this one. So like you can uh, you can go to the settings and you can see like there's lots of option. You can increase the font size of the text editor. Like you can you can increase, decrease the terminal font size also. So this look more like an ID and like uh, you can open this like in, in the site tab. So it will give you the easy access from the launcher. Like you can select uh, the console like uh, Python 3 is there right now. We can go to the terminal like uh, so like we, we if you we, if we want to use the command line uh, using the terminal, we can do that. So this is a very cool addition. So yeah, if you want to use Jupyter Lab, you can use Jupyter Lab as, as well. So this was from my end. Uh, this was our workshop uh, for the Jupyter notebook on the discovery. So like if you have any question, feel free to ask. I hope you like the session. So you might get a survey link uh, from our HPC team. So if you if you get, please uh, fill that survey and that will be very helpful for us. Uh, it will help us to, uh, to see like uh, how is it going on, like what in more information we might add later on. So please uh, fill up the survey. Hey, I have a question. Is you, you said this is going to be uh, uploaded on the workshops, right? Yes. How long, uh, do you have an idea of like how long they take to upload this? Uh, hopefully, uh, once uh, the recording is ready, I'll try to upload the video as soon as possible. Uh, and also for the previous workshop, uh, I hope you will get both the uh, both the workshop video together. Okay. Sounds so good. like uh, I can give you the exact time, but uh, as soon as possible, uh, I, I can assure you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm stopping the recording.